In this video, I'd like to share a little tool that you can use during any kind of dictation that you're doing with students. And I just call this my writing mat. Um, it's basically a little template. I'll kind of show you what the whole thing looks like. We've got sounds, syllables, um, prefix, base word suffix, if you're working with morphology, and then an area to do sentence dictation at the bottom. And then you can simply just laminate it, or you can put it in a sheet protector. And then on the flip side, there's a little sorting mat that if you wanted to have the students do some word sorting, they could do that on the back. Now what's nice about this is when it's laminated or in a sheet protector, you can then use an Expo marker and a little eraser and you can make it reusable. So this way we avoid wasting paper, which is nice. We're always trying to do that as teachers. Uh, it also helps kind of reduce anxiety that students may have a lot of times these kids are worried about making mistakes so this avoids that anxiety because if they make an error they can simply just erase it with their um, little erasing tool here um, and the kids also just really enjoy it um, oftentimes students really squeeze their pencils and put a lot of pressure on their hands which cause that causes that muscle fatigue and so the markers just sort of take that pressure off and the kids enjoy using them. So it's a motivational tool as well. I'll just show you how you can do this really simply. So for the sounds, we can use that in a couple ways. We can use that during a dictation where we're just asking students to spell specific sounds. So you would say to the students, spell sh, and they say and write sh, spell ch, and they say ch. Spell ah, ah, spell eh, eh, and so forth. And you can use it as many times as you want. Maybe you only want them to do a few sounds. Maybe you want them to fill this whole thing up and then erase it and do more. Maybe you want them to do the whole alphabet. And the other neat thing you can do with this to sort of reinforce they've done the spelling, now they can do the reading. You can actually have the students, as they're erasing, say the sounds again. Sh, ch, ah, eh. So it kind of does double duty, which is nice. And you can't do that with a pencil. Uh, the next piece of this that you can do is you can dictate words. And the students would write one sound in each box. I call these sound boxes to keep it simple for kids. So let's say you want them to write the word now, ship. They would say and write, sh, eh, p, ship. And then you could do the same thing as they erase it. Have them just read it now, sh, eh, ship. Nice and simple. Then if you wanted students to write words that contain more than one syllable, we now have syllable boxes. You'll notice they're a little bit bigger so we can fit more in there and we have up to four syllables. I find um, typically you're not going to be writing um, a word with more than that unless you're then moving on to using some morphology where you're adding a prefix or suffix. So um, in that case, we'd use the boxes down here, which I'll show you in a minute. So let's say we want students to write the word napkin. We have them syllabicate the word napkin, and then they write it. Nap in napkin, and then they erase and read. Napkin. Okay, another one, rabbit. Now this is good when we're teaching the students the rabbit rule, we think of that um, that short sound, what are we hearing? We're hearing an ah and rabbit, so we know it needs to be closed in. Rab, bit, rabbit. That's usually how I have students syllabicate these. Um, there are other ways to do it with syllabication can get a little bit tricky because when we say the word rabbit, we don't actually say rab bit. We say rabbit or rab it. So you can make that decision if you would prefer to have the students do the bees in one box, rab it, you can do it that way. And just remind them if they hear that ah, they write two bees. It's really a matter of preference. There really is no right or wrong with this as far as I'm concerned. And then we have down here, if you're having students spell words with a prefix or suffix, you can have them use this box. Um, this these boxes help students with morphology. So let's say I'm asking the students to write the word unpacking. I would have them say the whole word unpacking, and then I would ask them, what's the prefix 
What's the base word? What's the suffix? Oftentimes I do start, particularly when I begin, I usually don't begin with prefixes. We're usually starting off with simple base words and suffixes like ing or ed or s. So I always ask them to identify the base word. So let's say I'm asking the students to write the word jumped. I would ask them, what's the base word in jumped? Now the reason we want to ask them what the base word is is because sometimes a spelling rule will need to be applied um, and then we would go ahead and do that. I'll do another example of that in a minute. So if I'm doing jumped, we would have them say jump. Looks like I need a new expo marker. <laughs> if you do this, you have to have lots of expo markers on hand. Jump and then what's the suffix? Well, we hear t, but we know that that's going to be ed. That's the time traveler suffix. We're making this past tense. And then they erase and read jumped. Okay. Now, if you're doing a word like biking, you would say, what's the base word? The base word is bike. So they write bike. And then you can remind them, okay, we have bike. We're adding ing, which is a vowel suffix. What do we need to do? And they can say, oh, I have to drop the, and they can just simply erase it. Bike, ing, biking. And that's how we can use those spelling rules and just erase or do whatever we need to change. It makes it easier for the students to identify if there needs to be a spelling rule change. And then if we wanted to do a word that contained a prefix, a base word, and a suffix, for instance, the word unpacking, the student would break it down. Well, what's the prefix? The prefix is on, the base word is pack, and the suffix is ing, unpacking. And then they just erase, unpack. Okay, and then you would just go through for your sentence dictation if you're doing a di dictation or you're asking maybe the students to do a writing activity where maybe you're providing the subject, you want them to finish the sentence, whatever it is you want them to do. They have plenty of space to go ahead and write their spelling or their, uh, their sentences and they can go ahead and check it with whatever tool you use. I usually ask them to use COPS to check and it's easy because they can just erase if they have a mistake and fix it. So that's the writing mat and I've started using this more and more with my students and they really enjoy it and I found that it's helpful in a lot of different ways um, as I said kind of limits that anxiety with making mistakes makes it more fun for the kids and also saves paper which is good for the environment. Hope you enjoyed this video and can use this in your classroom.